Hey folks, Vince the Evil DM here. Another video this week here on my channel. Hopefully you're doing pretty well. Just want to talk a little bit about today. There are rules in a book. Books are only the guideline and the DM has the final say. Now, the rules exist as a framework to ensure that there is fair play. There is a common ground that everybody has in the game. Everybody is on the same page. They provide a structure for storytelling, mechanics, helping players understand how to interact with the game world, how to interact with one another, how to interact with dice rolls and things like that. Without rules, there'd be a lot of chaos um, and a lot of stifling of creativity when it comes to no rules. Now, the role of the DM serves as both a storyteller and a referee, guiding the narrative while interpreting these rules. They have the authority to make decisions that enhance the flow of the game even if it means adjusting or discarding written rules. The DM's judgment is often needed in situations not explicitly covered by the rules. A lot of newer players don't understand all this, and they think that the book um, is the final say. The book is not the final say. Uh, a DM has to think on their toes, and the DM has the final say over whatever happens in his world. You're sitting down creating this world for your players. You are going to be the one that's going to be saying yes or no. Uh, no. You don't want certain races in your world. You don't want certain classes because of the world you're in. These are all things you're supposed to sit down and talk to your players about during character creation. I don't say session zero because that's not what we called it. We called it character creation. It's always been called that. And the session zero crap started coming in when we started doing all these things like... Um, actual plays and YouTube videos and stuff like that. Then people started saying session, session, because the game became more of a session as opposed to just a sitting down playing a game in a hobby. Because this is a hobby. D&D is a hobby. And the dungeon master is the judge, jury, <laughs> and executioner, so to speak, of the hobby when you're playing at their table. Generally, when you're playing at the table, it's the DM's game. Now, it doesn't have to be DM versus player mentality, and that's not really the whole purpose of the game, though it has been fostered quite a bit with the Gary Gygax editions. Uh, and a lot of people back in the 80s did have that whole it's me versus you attitude, and that really didn't foster some really good role-playing. But it's always good once in a while for the DM to play the adversary to the players to help make their job a little bit more difficult. You're not in this together holding hands, jumping rope through the rainbow. You're playing a game that is supposed to be deadly. It's supposed to spark imagination. And you're supposed to know how to run and when to run. You're not superheroes. You are regular people who went out adventuring. Uh, when it comes to later editions, they make you feel more of a superhero. And they made it, and they accidentally made the mistake of doing balancing stuff. Now, the reason for balancing was to let newer DMs, when 3rd edition rolled around, know how to plan an encounter without destroying their party in the first session. Unfortunately, it was taken to the word. <laughs> taken to the letter, I should say. The people that read the book took it as, this is what should be here and nothing else. When we played original D&D, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, or second edition Dungeons and Dragons Advanced, they made sure that the monsters were different. And it's not always going to be your level. It's not an MMO uh, where you have your level areas you're safe in. You have monsters that'll make you say, oh shit, run. That's what D&D is about. It's about trying to survive, trying to kill the monster, trying to figure out ways to get around the monster to get to the treasure, and become famous, capture as much gold as you can, and have legends writ about, written about you in the game. You want to experience the game so that when you play it, you remember it, so you have fond stories when talking about it around the table. So, well, the DM has the final say when it comes to everything at the table, and not every scenario in the game is anticipated in the book. If you had every possible scenario in the book, which is not even possible, you'd have a six to seven to eight hundred page book of just rules. And who the hell wants to sit through reading all that? That's slog fest. 
um, the original books didn't have, and they weren't very thick with rules. In fact, the player's handbook was like 140 something. The DM's book was not much fa- bigger in page count. And that's all we had to play. Hell, the original little brown books were not, had very little amount of rules in it. They weren't thinking about it. They expected the judge or the referee to just adjudicate the situation because they had experience. They thought they had experience or they would just gain the experience by just playing. There is no wrong way to play Dungeons and Dragons. You could play whatever edition you want. You could play it however you want, and anybody could sit at the table. There's no, there's no, you know, it's not sitting at the table. Just play and play the game. And so you and your group are having fun. Everybody has to have fun. Not just one person, not just two people, not just the players, not just the DM. Everybody needs to come to a consensus and have fun when it comes to doing that. A lot of times people want balance in the game. And I understand that. You want to go into the game knowing that you're not going to die. Going into a game knowing you're not going to die takes a lot of the fun out of the game. At least it does for me. I want to know that I'm walking into a world where the dragons are going to eat me. There's going to be a thief around the corner ready to stab me in the back. And if I make a risky move, there might be a humongous reward for me. That's what I like. And I think D&D has moved away from that. D&D has moved more into worrying about people playing characters that they want, which is fine, but socializing more than having an adventure. They rather tailor to people that want to go to the prom or people that want to bake uh, and do things like that, as opposed to somebody wanting to go out and saving the princess or going out and saving the king's kingdom. D&D has moved very far away from what it used to be. Now, I'm not putting down later editions. It may sound like I am, but I'm not. You can take any edition and play it however you want. It doesn't matter what it says in the book. The book could say you're a jerk. You could just ignore that. It doesn't really matter. Your game, your rules, you play it however you want. Nobody's going to come knocking on your door. I'm not going to come knocking on your door. Uh, Watsy is not going to come knocking on your door. And certainly nobody from TSR's past that's still alive is going to come knocking on your door. You're not going to have Frank Mincer knock on your door and say, hey, I wrote Beck me a certain way and you're not playing it correctly. Frank could give two craps. I mean, he'd like to know that you're playing the game the way he wrote it, sure, but I don't think he really cares if you play it and add this rule or that rule or disregard this rule or that rule. He just wants to know that you're having fun. So... That's all Gary wanted, was to show us fun. Gary is the father of D&D, along with Dave Arneson. And the two of them built us a game that people are stepping on left and right and taking it away from its original vision. Now, you can call that progression, moving along with the times, whatever you want to do. Uh, this is why certain movements exist. There's the, you know, the OSR movement. That is probably, you know, just dedicated to keeping things originally how it was with a little bit leeway. There's old school gamers that just want to play the games how they played back when they were younger. There's the, the New Age movement, which is like the 3E, and I've noticed there's a fourth, uh, fourth edition movement coming around. And then there's the new mainstream gamers that just want to play D&D just like everybody else is playing. Because it's the cool thing to do. I don't, can't tell you how many people I know that play D&D because it's cool. I remember playing D&D and everybody made fun of you. And if you found a person that played D&D, you were like, what? You play D&D? Oh, that's awesome. Tell me more about it. And you talked about it secret. Being a nerd, playing D&D was an outcast. Now it's kind of like you play D&D. All right. You know, you're cool now. Oh, because all the celebrities do it. Because all the people you see on YouTube doing it. Yeah, I'm on YouTube doing it, right? So I guess I'm cool. No, I'm not. Tell me about it. I just wanted to do this video today because the DM has the final say. And I want to make sure everybody has fun at the table. That's my absolute objective when it comes to playing games. And make sure everybody has fun. But someone has to draw the line. And the DM is going to draw the line when he says so. And you really shouldn't argue with him. You should just go with it. And then talk to him after the game about it. Because there's nothing worse than you're playing a game. You're sitting there. 
and you don't like how something's handled, and you start arguing, and that really breaks the mood of the game. Just suck it up, let it slide, keep it in the back of your head. As soon as the game's over, be like, dude, can we talk for a little bit? Sure. I don't like the way this was handled when you did this or that. I don't think it was cool. Maybe we should talk about Most DMs will be like, yeah, no problem. We'll discuss it. We'll figure out a way to make sure you're happy so we're happy. A shitty DM will just be like, I don't care. And I've seen plenty of those that are just like, I don't care. You have to care. <laughs> and that's one way to get things rolling in your group. Tell me what you think in the comments below. The DM has the final say, or is it more of a players have the final say? And the DM can be a run over like uh, a train going to Houston. I have no idea. Anyway, I'm going to head out. Keep it original. Keep it old school. Good night. God bless. And keep those D&D &D fires lit. Good night.